inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the editor-at-large at Corporate Board Member Magazine. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the essential eight technologies what all boards should know. And joining me to discuss that is Barbara Berlin, who's the director with PwC's Governance Insights Center. Welcome back, Barbara. Thanks, TK. Pleasure to be here. So, um, obviously we know the digital landscape is changing quickly. Um, there are, you guys have what's called the eight essential technologies um, that sort of you've packaged together. So t tell us a little bit about those and how you got to the eight and what the eight are. Sure. So you're right, TK, the digital landscape is changing fast. And I think with its changing, it's creating new opportunities for products, services, as well as for companies to transform themselves. And I think what's really interesting about that is every industry is being impacted by these digital changes. And what we're seeing are industry lines blurring between companies, whether it's the financial firms that have become technology firms or the big box retailers that are engaged with shipping now and internet sales or even as we've seen recently where a pharmaceutical retail company buys an insurance company. So those lines are blurring and so what we often hear in our discussions with boards is the challenges in understanding what, where to start these conversations with management how to keep up with the changes, and particularly because this area is a little unfamiliar for directors, for management, and others. So one thing we did at PwC is we looked at 150 different new technologies, and we evaluated them and synthesized them down to the essential eight. And these are the eight technologies that we think have the biggest global impact across industries. So the eight technologies are uh, Artificial intelligence, AI, the Internet of Things, IoT, augmented reality, virtual reality, robotics, blockchain, drones, and 3D printing. And those are the ones that we don't expect will impact every company in every industry, but it will impact across industries, each company and industry differently. But I think it does give board members a frame of reference to look at and to start having more meaningful conversations with management about some of the technological changes that are happening. And as we looked at even at the study, the two that are probably getting the most focus are artificial intelligence, AI, and the Internet of Things, IoT. That's the two that executives have said are the two biggest disruptors as well as where they're making the largest investments. So I know um, the Governance Insights Center always produces these series, okay? And you're doing the same with these eight essential and you're coming out with things like that. So let's, let's sort of take a look at those two, uh, artificial intelligence and the internet of things. Um, what, um, how is that, you know, what'd you find out that impacts the board and Tell us a little bit about those two. I think our goal with the series is again to sort of help boards have more meaningful discussions with management. So what we wanted to do was be able to, in plain English, talk about some of the highlights of what we're seeing with these various technologies. Now clearly we can't cover them in any depth here, so trying to share a few highlights maybe about artificial intelligence. So when I think about artificial intelligence, I'm thinking about what it means, which is to enable a computer or a machine to be able to perceive data, analyze it, and then interact on its own and adapt to its environment. And the way it does that is through software algorithms that allow it to perform specific tasks, whether those are visual recognition, speech recognition, or specific decisions they make based on the data they receive. 
and ultimately it allows the machine to think and to learn and to do it without human interaction. Now there's all different kinds of levels with AI and I'm clearly not doing it justice in this conversation, but as you look around, some of the places that we're seeing AI is through digital assistants, Jeeves, where you can ask it a question, it can search large volumes of data and give you a response. Uh, it can perform simple tasks for you, like updating a calendar, uh, alarm clocks, etc. We also see it in uh, customer service conversations, right, where you're calling customer service, you're using speech recognition and language recognition to be able to answer a question and potentially focus you on new products or services. You will see it in facial recognition being put into smartphones. And then when you think about IoT, for example, again at a very high level, what we're referring to is the ability of a device to connect to the internet or to connect to one another and to really get data. So where you see that is, for example, with cars today, with sensors, right? They can uh, identify when you're close to an object. Uh, can give you inf it can gather information, hopefully to prevent an accident. You see it in uh, wearable devices for people for fitness. How far are you going from a distance? How many steps are you taking? What is your heart rate? But really where I see the value and the power is these technologies working together. So AI working with the Internet of Things, uh, AI and IoT working with robotics or with drones. And really you can see how these technologies are going to evolve. The possibilities are endless. So for example, take the wearable devices that I said are you know, giving you your heart rate. Now it's monitoring your overall health. It's looking for red flags. It's communicating that information to your doctor. It's giving you information on the types of foods you're eating. Uh, you might get a text from the doctor's office. Uh, and you can think about, even as we progress further, how that can be used to make better patient decisions and better patient care decisions. Or you think about it from a manufacturing standpoint where companies are building these factories of the future where they have sensors that are looking along the production line. They're evaluating and will be able to determine whether a, a machine needs maintenance uh, before there's a shutdown, before there's a bigger issue. It can be looking at inventory levels, identifying where you're low and automatically be making trans transactions to get you the inventory. It can look to improve uh, the cycles that people are doing through their to create more efficiency in those cycles. So it's just the possibilities are endless and really when you think about it, it's all about the data. That's the real value today for companies is the data because that can be used to gather new insights about how consumers are behaving or how employees are behaving. But it doesn't come without risks, right? There's a lot of risks that need to be considered too, whether that's from a talent perspective and even having the infrastructure to be able to deliver on these technologies. So when you think about AI, you're thinking about, you know, it, it, just even two years ago, you were thinking about that these things were futuristic. All of a sudden, it's right there in front of you. You know, it's, it's uh, happening today. And so that makes you think about, okay, what digital skills are necessary? And so how do boardrooms deal with that today? That's a, a really good point, TK. It's a big concern out there, right? Having the digital skills that you need to really deliver on the digital investments. And that's a barrier we are often hearing about through our management interactions. So for the board, they want to be talking to management about what's the workforce of the future look like? How are we recruiting new talent that has these digital skills? How are we retaining them? And then also, how are we upskilling the workforce that currently exists? And we do a digital IQ survey each year. And in that survey, we ask actually 2,200 IT executives and business executives respond. And we ask them, how strong is your digital IQ at your organization? How is it that your company values digital technology as well as it's woven into the fabric of the organization? And the response that we get from that is 52% of respondents say that their digital IQ is strong. And that is actually down 15 percentage points from the year before. So that's a pretty significant drop. And I think it shows the struggle with getting the talent in the organization. So I think focusing on how you're getting the right talent, where you're getting that talent from, and really upskilling your workforce. 
I know we at PwC are taking significant steps to upskill our workforce. We're making a big investment through various channels. One of the things that we're doing is having each of the employees fill out a digital fitness assessment to evaluate their knowledge of digital technologies, their use, and many other factors, which ultimately will lead us to have customized training at an individual level so that we can really increase our digital skills. And I think companies are thinking about ways that they can do that as well. Well, um, we've only just scratched the surface. People can take advantage of these board bites, um, I think that's what you call them, um, uh, by just Googling PwC's uh, Governance Insight Center. Um, and um, I think that you're slowly working through the series of eight so that people can sort of keep track on the side of all that's happened. And Barbara, this, again, sounds futuristic. It's not. It's upon us today. So I really appreciate the time of you coming in and starting to sort of get this group down that road. Um, and that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.